What's happening, people? And once again, welcome back to youtube.com forward slash Cubcam TV for this, another edition of the Cubcast Daily, our daily news section we run here on the channel, exploring different international news stories, breakdowns, uh, conversations, top fives, all of that good stuff. And today we have a very exciting one to be getting into. We are going to be getting into a top six listing today, breaking down uh, what I believe to be the top six artists within Afrobeat specifically across the course of 2022 with the year closing towards an end. I thought this would be a good time to actually sit down and do this we were going to do it before christmas but i thought you know what let's hold out for a couple more days um and also we've been on a little bit of a break as well so i'm excited to get into this list as always friends if you are new to the channel make sure you're getting involved by hitting that subscribe button on the right hand side of the page of course turning notifications on as well leaving a like leaving a comment and all of that good stuff we are aiming to hit 65k by the end of the year um we can definitely do that with your help so please do get involved if you are new to the channel and if you are enjoying the content as well i cannot thank you all enough now now, we are going to start off in position number six um, for the artists that I believe are the top six artists within Afrobeat specifically. Um, actually, before that, let's get into the uh, honourable mentions. I do have Simi down as an honourable mention. I think her album was very, very much slept on. I also have Kiz Daniel um, down as an honourable mention. Obviously, he's had two big bangers this year in Koth and Booga. Fireboy DML did not make my top six, but he is definitely an honourable mention as well. Obviously, a huge album feature, some wicked link-ups, and of course, the uh, Black Panther soundtrack as well. And uh, my final of the um, the honourable mentions actually goes to Omar Lay as well. Uh, unique album, yet very, very slept on. Um, but outside the album, I don't really think he did enough to warrant being on this list. So there we go. We are going to be breaking these down again. This is my personal listing, the artist that I have enjoyed the most over 2022. So if you have your own lists, please do let me know in the comment section down below as well. I'm actually very keen to see what your top six artists are. Coming in at number six. Now, this might be slightly controversial to a few people. But for me, in regards to the amount of bangers that I have heard, the amount of like uh, absolute hits that we've heard um, and just kind of a returning impact more than anything else. Number six on my list is Techno. Um, again, an artist who had a huge return at the start of the year. He definitely hit the ground running with what he was doing, combining a, a really nice kind of set of traditional kind of Afrobeat sounds with a highly uh, kind of modernized um, production style more than anything else. Top quality music videos from start to finish as well. He has one of the biggest tracks of the year in Booga, of course. Um, and it feels like he was never really gone. Um, when you actually sit down and break down the tracks that he's been putting out there. Just a really high level of quality that he's been releasing. I really, really enjoyed it. For each of these listings, we are going to list what I believe to be the three biggest tracks of the year. So obviously, Booga with Kids Daniel is undeniably the biggest, if we're being honest. Mufasa as well. That was the big return track for Techno. And of course, Ginger as well. I absolutely love Ginger. I love how silky it is. I love the use of the percussion. The instrumentation's fantastic as well. And that's why uh, uh, we do see... Um, Man like Techno sitting in at number six for me on this listing. And we aren't going to waste any time with these. We are going to run through them moderately quickly. I know everyone's trying to relax and enjoy this period in between. So I'm not going to waffle on for too long as we move into number five on this list. And that is Victony. Now, Victony is um, an interesting one, if we're being entirely honest. Um, obviously, he has a huge appearance on Burner Boy's album, which I've listed as probably the album of the year. Um, he's had viral releases this year as well. Obviously, Soweto did absolutely fantastically. Uh, Jolene, for me, off that same project is undoubtedly one of the most unique um, and kind of forward-thinking Afrobeats releases of this year. It was a tune that I actually had in my favorite selections before um, before towards the end of the year when a couple of other ones snuck in. But overall, for me, definitely one of the strongest tracks of the year. Um, alongside this, he has the most unique vocals that I've heard probably this year overall. Hearing those higher-pitched lines, obviously, Burner bringing him in is a great example of that. We also saw it on a color session as well. Um, <clears throat> undeniably, one of the most unique vocal sets, and that's something that is difficult to do in a scene that is as crowded as Afrobeats currently is. Um, so you've got to give him the props. Again, the highlights for me would be Jolene, uh, Soweto, and Apollo. You can't forget Apollo came out this year as well. Without a doubt, one of the strongest EP projects of the year. Um, all three tracks that I've listed are on there, but again, he has had the Color Session as well. He has had um, b, b as well. He's also had the XO remix. He's also, of course, featured on that Burner album. So it's crazy to see just how much he has been able to achieve in the space of a year after blowing up towards the end of last year with Holy Father. So there we go. That's why Victor is in number five for me. Moving into number four then. Again, an artist that I've got a lot of time for. An artist that I always enjoy breaking down on the channel. And it is, of course, Aira Star. Undeniably one of the leading female acts in um, Afrobeats music worldwide. Really taking America by storm. Obviously coming over to the UK as well a couple of times was really exciting. But again, uh, we saw the revamp of 19 and Dangerous, the official deluxe edition. Touring around the world with Maven. Um, huge work on the Maven album as well. She's definitely one of the kind of leading 
leading features on that Maven project. The, uh, the, the rebuild of 19 and Dangerous was fantastic. A ton of fa uh, wicked collaborations. I love the link-ups with LoJ myself. I thought they were all fantastic. Um... Uh, just in general, one of my favorite live performers of the year as well. Like, I love that version of Rush, um, the Vivo one. I thought that was fantastic. We've seen a couple of actual live videos from um, Rush being performed as well. Alongside that, her color session for me, probably my favorite, even though Colossa is probably the most popular. Ashe is the one that I find myself singing the most. Um, and overall, just a fantastic year. That's, for, that's not forgetting, of course. She collaborated with Kelly Rowland, which is a, it's a monumental moment for an artist, especially a, a younger artist like Aerostar to kind of get that into international link up that has that much clout and that much kind of potency i absolutely loved seeing it again her highlights for me rush um ashe and the bloody samaritan remix which is the track that features kelly Rowland. a fantastic year for aira star who has undoubtedly made her stock rise significantly over the course of 2022 moving into number three then we do see of course we had to feature him at rema um again an act that has taken the world by storm this year with calm down the official remix with uh, selena gomez being one of the biggest releases of the year in regards to viewership. Um, I think it's the highest streamed on Spotify Afrobeats tune of the year that has been released this year. Um, over 200 million streams. Absolutely incredible. I know the video is doing absolute bits. I think I saw it's on over 300 million now. Incredible numbers. It's looking like he will be hitting a billion on that within the course of a year, which is crazy across all platforms. Again, a uh, somewhat slept on album. Um, for me, Raven Roses was a very unique project. I love the fact that they did so many different things stylistically. Sonically, it went in a very, very big different direction we saw him appear on chicken shop day as well some really big live performances from Rema this year also making a ton of big appearances on the new mavens project as well as a star who we just mentioned so he's featured on two very big projects this year obviously raven roses and the uh mavens project um incredible who else has this many big appearances if we're being entirely honest um for me the highlights for Rema would be calm down time and affection which obviously features chris brown a wicked link up there as well and then of course addicted which for me is almost weekend esque in the way that it sounds very unique in its uh, sort of arrangement factor which I absolutely love to see so there we go uh, Rema sat very comfortably in third place. Now, moving into second. First and second for me were battling it out for a while. I think these are going to be most people's first and seconds, if we're being entirely honest. But in second place, I am going to go for Ashake. Now, uh, this is a very interesting one because he's the first ever act, I believe, if the uh, information I have is correct, to hit number ones in Nigeria with both a debut EP and a debut album in the same year. An incredible feat. Um, and I definitely think he's someone that has changed the landscape of Afrobeats music in Nigeria. I don't think there's any getting away from that. When you look at his combination, the fusion of Fuji and Ama piano styles, really kind of think, taking things forward, those cello sounds in there. Again, the choral backing vocals, we're hearing them everywhere. We weren't hearing them everywhere prior to um, him pushing those sounds. So it's great to see, again, a huge album, obviously, um, which featured some incredible tracks on there. Absolutely dominated the US Afrobeats Billboard charts. Um, he has been the hit maker of the year. I don't think he's missed once when you actually look at all of the different creations on there um, but then you look at the actual tracks that are featured on the EP and the obviously the album as well um, Omar Ope one of the highlight tracks uh, undoubtedly one of the tracks of the year you then see Peace Be Unto You again undoubtedly one of the tracks of the year and the Sumba remix for me a tune that I've absolutely loved playing in every single dance at every available opportunity um, so there we go Asake is sat in uh, number two but then we can move into the uh, first position now for me this one was quite obvious this year um, I think there is no denying um that the first place is first place after thinking about it for a while. Just the global impact, the overall feeling that has come with it, the, icon the iconography, um, it has been fantastic to seeing just seeing what this guy has done and also seeing how he has taken a brand to an entirely different level. We are, of course, talking about the one and only Burner Boy. An incredible year for him. Love the Mini, obviously one of the biggest albums to ever come out of Afrobeats music in regards to kind of global appreciation. Four continents hit with that album. Incredible stuff. The World Tour that followed has been outstanding to watch. I've been following the clips on his Instagram. Um, obviously a huge feature on the Black Panther album as well. Um, I feel he's kind of had a cultural icon status that has been reimagined over the course of this year. Um, King of Collaborations as well. Some wicked collaborations on his album project. Obviously features on the Sungwa remix as well. Um, 
And not only that, a ton of his older material has been doing really well this year as well. You can look at the US Afro Beats Billboard chart and see Ye um, is doing incredibly well. On the Lows, doing incredible, incredibly well as well. Uh, Jerusalem, who he, where he features, is also doing incredibly well. So when you actually look at the uh, the depth of his catalogue and how relevant he has become, um, there's no denying for me that he is the artist of the year. For me, the three highlights, obviously, Last Last, a huge tune which took the world by storm. Um, Alone, again, a huge track off the brand new uh, project for the Black Panther project of course and it's plenty another absolute heater as well which was probably the most popular of the tracks off the album when the album actually landed you know the new ones you get when you open an album and you haven't heard the majority that was probably the most popular of those so there we go that makes up my top six artists of 2022 i am very keen to hear your thoughts on this list so let me know in the comment section down below what your top six artists would be and i'm very keen to hear from you so please do get involved as always if you're new to the channel as well make sure you're getting involved by hitting that subscribe button on the right hand side side of the page turning notifications on as well leaving a like leaving a comment and all of that good stuff and we shall see you all next time have a fantastic rest of your day and peace make sure you subscribe to the youtube channel right now corp cam tv stay locked